That tower is a symbol. It's a beacon. It is both unassuming and yet towering. A lot of people know Louisville simply because of the water tower. Because it's been a part of the city skyline since 1960. I see a lot of memories. It just feels like a part of you is, is going away. Gary Kerbo also sees his childhood when he sees the fighting farmer's water tower along I-35 with letters many feet long. Eight and a half, taller than me. Wow, that's incredible. A celebration of Louisville High School football and softball championships. All over the country and say you're from Louisville, and they'll say, are you the fighting farmers? And yep, that's it. It is widely recognized, no debating that. Now sometimes you're stuck between emotion and reality. And reality is the idea of keeping it simply doesn't hold water anymore. James Kunke with the city of Louisville. There's things you don't see from the ground. Some of the welding, some of the wiring, uh, the lining inside the tank. And the toll of the blistering Texas sun. Gary started a group to save the tower. He knows its history, like the time rival students climbed up and painted the then silver tower. They made all the L's look like E's, so it changed the, the wording of Louisville to Ewis V. That hit the headlines on the, the, in the paper. Now the headline is it would cost $700,000 to fix it and repaint it. The city has opted to soon reimagine the fighting farmer in a colorful mural off I-35. Maybe save pieces for the school for nostalgia. I would just say it's going to be sad to see you go. I don't really know what else I could say to it. Gary has made peace with the tower coming down. The city has too. The hope is by the end of this year. In 1960, Louisville had 4,000 people. Now it's 114,000. And nearby I-35. It was four lanes, two lanes either way. Everything has changed. Progress can sometimes be painful. In Louisville, I'm Jobin Paniker.